again. I'm sorry about that. Something happened and it all went pear-shaped. But here I am. So I might just start from the very beginning again um, to show you that what I'm doing today is using a new suite out of the new mini catalogue. So with this new mini catalogue is coming in January. I can't show you anything inside it at the moment. It, not until it starts in January, about the 5th or the 4th, I think. And this is one of the new suites in this one. This suite has dies and coordinating stamp set. And it is also part of a big suite as well. So it has lots of lovely, lovely things in it. Actually, with this bundle, this particular bundle, just with these dies and stamp set, you can also earn something free from the celebration catalogue as well so that's pretty exciting as well and i can't show you that one that one starts on the 4th of january also okay so what i have planned for today for my little teaching video is to teach about using our watercolor pencils and coloring with them this was at a request from a customer who just wanted some hints and tips using pencils so we have two sets of pencils in our annual catalogue and they have a great variety of good Stampin' Up! colours, all Stampin' Up! colours. And the watercolour pencils are really easy to use because they've got lovely soft lead and they would just work really, really well for colouring in, especially if you're starting out, a new person, it gives you lots and lots of colours, but also lots of success with colouring in as well. Okay, so I wanted to show you the difference between stamping on watercolour paper and colouring on watercolour paper, which is textured. This is pure cotton watercolour paper, so it has a texture in it. And that allows you to do really successful watercolouring with it because it allows you to take lots and lots of water and it doesn't peel like ordinary cardstock does. And then I've stamped exactly the same image on our basic white paper. Now you can see that the image, because this is polished cardstock, the ink has absorbed into it a lot easier and darker than it has on the watercolour paper. It's actually lighter because of the texture. And I have used to stamp both of these, our St Saddle Brown Stays On ink. Stays On is a solvent-based ink, which is waterproof. And I use Saddle Brown just because, actually, my card is probably going to feature earthy tones. But Saddle Brown is much softer than using basic black. I prefer it for most things. Okay, so I've done my two stampings on my two different papers. Now we'll do some colouring in and I'll show you the different effects that you get with both papers. Radio. So let's have a look at our colours here. I haven't really thought about what colours to add for my projects. So I might um, use crushed curry for the centres of my flowers. This is crushed curry here. So I'm just going to scribble a little bit of watercolour pencil onto my stamped image so scribble 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 on my flowers and the same on my basic white cardstock so you can see immediately i'm not sure whether you can notice i'm using the same pressure on both but a lot more color has come down onto the watercolor paper than on the basic cardstock okay so i've got crushed curry in the middle now I'm going to do some, what's this colour? Granny Apple Green on my leaves. So I'll do, just scribble a bit of Granny Apple Green on a couple of leaves. Okay. On that one and on this one as well. It just, the watercolour paper just seems to absorb the colour, the ink a lot more. And I'm also going to use Garden Green as well to highlight some of the lines following the artist's helpful hints here and just drawing lines on with the granny, uh, garden green over the top of the granny apple green. Okay, now let's have a look and see what happens when you add water. I'll just push this out of the way for the minute. That and that. Okay, I'll do the watercolour paper first. And I've just got, this is our water painter. It's basically 
a paintbrush, but it has its own water reservoir already there that would fill up just from the tap, okay? So super easy to use, much easier than using a paintbrush in a jar, but it does exactly the same thing. So these are our water painters. They come in a set of three. So I think this one's the small one. Then there's, oh, that one's also a small one. So there's a small medium tip and a wide, wide brush that's really, really great for backgrounds. All right, so I've added my watercolor pencil and then with my brush, just drag that color around and have a look at that. There you go. Look at that nice and close. I'll do this other one. So I'm just dragging that scribble, my little scribble that I did with the crushed curry pencil and dragging it around the petal like that. And I'll do the same thing on the basic cardstock, just with the same sort of technique. Just drag it around on the, on the basic white and drag it around on the basic white. There you go. And then you can compare the difference of the intensity of color. All right, before I go um, for the next step, I'm just going to swipe that color off the tip of my brush. And then with the Granny Apple Green and Garden Green, just this one is on the basic white cardstock. I'm just adding water to the bits that I've already done there. All right, just moving it all around and spreading it around. And as you can see, you can blend colors to create multi-tones, all right? Here is the watercolor paper. Like that. There we are. And that one. Now the other thing you can do with the watercolor pencils as well. If we wanna add a bit more intensity, you can actually just pick up the color straight from the tip of the pencil using your brush. Just tap it onto the tip of the pencil. I'll use do it on another one so you can see and you can add color that way, okay? So I've just picked up the color off the tip of the watercolor pencil there. I wouldn't do it all the time because you don't want to ruin the tip of your water of your pencil, but it's a great way to add, you know, so if you wanted to add an extra little bit of detail, just get it a little bit from the tip there. The other thing you can do with watercolor pencils to get ink as well is to scribble it on a bit of scrap paper. So scribble, 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 and you can pick up the ink that way. All right, just pick up the ink. So if someone else is using the pencil and you'd like to use it as well, just scribble a piece on a bit of scratch paper and then pick up the colour with your pencil, your, your paintbrush, and add the, add the colour that way, okay? Let's do some of that on the basic white cardstock. So exactly the same. Add a little bit of colour. It's not spreading quite as easily this one on the basic white cardstock as it does on the watercolor paper. So the watercolor paper really allows color to spread and blend really, really well. Okay, and a bit more on this one. There we go. And I'll do the, I'll do the scribble technique with you as well. So I just scribble onto my scratch paper and pick up the color and add it to the project. There we are. I like watercoloring. I think it gives a really, really artistic finish to your work. It's um, less precise. Well, the way I watercolor is a lot less precise than using alcohol markers for coloring in just because you've got that watery image with the paintbrush. Let's get a bit more off that bit there. And add. Now, I want to fix up the colors on these. So I can, even though it's already wet, I can add more pencil to it. And often if your paper is already wet, the color will be more intense anyway. So I'm just going to add a bit more of Granny Apple Green to each of those leaves so that they coordinate with the ones that are already there. And then add my water. 
just give my paintbrush a bit of a squeeze so it's plenty wet enough there we go that's a bit more that's a bit better a bit more water and there we are and while it's wet oh this is the dark one in my hand isn't it can you see how much darker the color is when the pencil is already wet all right so that gives you a lot more tonal variation as well gives you a lot more flexibility and i'll put a little bit more dark just in the bottom of this one there we go so that's on the basic white cardstock let's do that with this one here so you can see just by the way that pencil is that it's wetter than when i colored with it first and just on the watercolor paper it's absorbing the water a lot better and just blending a lot, lot better okay i'll just scribble a bit on scribble a bit on so that pencils dried off a bit more now so now i've got some color to spread around watercoloring is if you're not stressing about you know making it look special watercoloring can be really really relaxing okay i'm just going to add some granny apple green to these ones and because my paper's already wet it's made the color a lot more intense there we go i've added the granny apple green over to the top there we are and i actually like the look of watercoloring in that it's not precise okay right and to add some depth of color just add my garden green to those stems down there this is where it's fun just mixing your colors with your pencils just giving you all sorts of tones so you could actually add a little bit of cajun craze as well to your leaf to give it a bit of an autumn tone as well and it'll just blend into your your greens as well a bit more on here blend that in you can see from that the watercolor paper it's taking it all very nicely okay using that cajun craze i'll do the seed pods as well now and i'm just adding color to one side there we go of the seed pod not the whole thing so i'm not coloring in the whole thing just add color to the seed pod and that gives me a bit of tonal variation because the intensity of the color will be right where i colored it and as i move it all over the whole image the other part of the seed pod will be a little bit lighter a tone or a shade lighter can you see what i'm doing there there we go gives you a bit of tonal variation and we'll do that on the basic white as well so i'm coloring where i think the shadow would be where the dark part of the seed pod would be over on the on the top curve and this one on the bottom curve my light's coming from all different corners and then on the basic white just spreading the color out of that cajun craze here we go my brush feels like it's drying up a bit so i'm just going to add a bit more water squeeze a bit more water out maybe i squeezed out a bit much water then it's very wet and i've got to be careful on this basic white that i don't make it too wet okay do i need to add anything else let me show you up close the difference between the two now oh sorry that's a bit too close so that's the watercolor paper and the basic white cardstock i have painted on them a little bit differently each of them i think i'll add a little bit of the cadging craze to the centers of the flowers now there we go scribble 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 and i can still see my stamped lines that of the saddle brown of the stamped image but just adding a bit of depth to the senses of the flowers there it's a little bit 
messy, but I actually like the messy look. There we go. Okay. So let's move on to the rest of our card. Now, hopefully I've given you some little hints and tips with the watercolour paper there and the watercolour pencils. Now, I do want to use my little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine and the coordinating die for these guys for this image here mind you i do like that little bit there that's behind it as well now to, to put this into the machine i'm going to have to trim my bit of watercolor paper here so that it'll fit in the machine so I'll just trim it off in my trimmer which i always keep on my desk right beside me so that I can use it any time. So I put my platform on, my base cutting mat, my cardstock, and then my die. Layering that all the way around. And I actually will use a little bit of washi tape to hold it in place. This is just some old washi tape I've had sitting around the place. Stick that across the top and another cutting plate and wind it through. Oh, yeah. That's that one done. That's the watercolour paper one. Let's just have a look here. Peel off my washi tape very carefully. Okay, so there's the watercolour paper image. Now this one, that's not going to fit on my stamp and cut and emboss machine very easily. So I'll just tape it in place. And then I'm going to use my scissors and trim up both sides so that it'll go through my machine no problems at all. So pop that on there and then that one there. I seem to be having issues with my internet this afternoon. So I hope it's not freezing for you because it looks like it's freezing to me. All right. There we are. And there's the other one. Okay, let me show you up close and personal what they each look like. So the one on my left is the basic white cardstock and the one on my right is the watercolour paper. Okay. Right, now let's put them together on a card. So I've got two card bases here ready to go. But I want to make a bit of a feature of the other stamps that are in the stamp set as well. So... I'm going to use some Pecan Pie, which is a very close match to the Saddle Brown Stays On ink, to make two mats. So I think I'll make them um, 13 centimetres by 9. 9 centimetres, 9, to make two cards. 13 centimetres by 9, 1, 2, and then my white cardstock to stamp on 12 and a half centimeters by eight and a half centimeters okay i can put that away and there we go i've got two little gee i didn't measure that very well did i Must have done a bit more than eight and a half on that one. There we go. All right, so then I'm going to put that on the front and this on the front with a little greeting, just a very simple card. But for my background pieces, just pop you out of the way. I just want to have a play and use some of these lovely images that are in the stamp set. And I think I'll use Pecan Pie ink for this. So, I need some scrap paper. What did I do with my scrap paper? Here it is, just to put in the background. I'm hoping this is still working. And 
choose one of the stamps with my pecan pie and add a little image there and there before stamping it off maybe I think that's a bit dark so I'm going to stamp it off and then do a bit image there and stamp it off and do an image there all right and this little guy here every stamp set with one of these little textural elements is a great idea just gives you a bit more flexibility and a fantastic way to cover up messes okay so this one here put you there in the middle as well and then i've got some writing field lawn and garden there we are so it looks like a a journal entry and the last bit of stamping I'm going to do is a congratulations. And I'll put that one on this thick one here, take off that one, and use one of my many scraps that I keep in my drawer to do congratulations. Here we go. All right, let's have a go and see what, what ideas. Actually, what I will do before I do anything else, actually, is I'm going to add a little bit of blending. So I'll go for a lighter colour than my pecan pie and add crumb cake with my blending brush. Just add to give it a bit of a sepia tone to my background to help it stand out a bit from the die cut coloured image that we're going to put on the front. Okay. And crumb cake's pretty forgiving because it's nice and light. But you can, I'm just going to add a bit more extra depth right on the corners. There we go, a bit more extra. There we go, okay. All right, let's stick this together. And make sure my glue is at the front. Roll, break, roll, break. Move you out of the way. this onto my pecan pie and do the same make sure the glue is at the front of my wheel move the glue to the front of my wheel and stick that onto the front of my card it looks great with the, the little bit of sponging there to make the colour of the so there we go this one here is the watercolour paper. I can feel by the texture. This one here is the basic white cardstock. So I'll do the watercolour paper here. And then I'm going to put congratulations over the top. And I'm just wondering whether I should have a bit more texture with a bit of ribbon. Wham, which comes with the sweet. I think there is some. All right. some ribbon it is called faux leather trim so I've already tied a bow in it I dropped it on the floor on my way to bringing it to you so it's all unraveled but I'm just going to pop that at the base of my and put my congratulations over there all right and dimensionals here they are one two three, four, five, we don't want it to fall off the card, oops, and pop that there, with my faux leather trim that I've already tied in a bow, I'm going to Pop a mini glue dot on that and peel it off the mini glue dot and put you there at the base of the stem of the and then my congratulations to stick that I'm going to use the edge of my dimensionals right on that edge piece 
which is very useful because it's all sticky right to the very edge and this works a treat with your skinny greetings like that so where do we put our congratulations down the bottom or through the middle I don't want to cover up my coloring in so it's going to be going half on half off maybe down here maybe just front and center there Let's tuck you underneath there there we go so there's my card with no plan just winging it to show you the difference between coloring with watercolor pencils on watercolor paper and basic white cardstock have a little play it's really fun and really easy to do thank you so much for joining me i hope you learned something new today